With COVID causing panic and fear in this world these days, it is a common occurrence to see many people in facial masks. In fact, many people wore protective masks in Japan before the epidemic of COVID ever came to be. The story tonight is about the infamous ghost woman, Kushi Saki Ona, or is it? Before we get farther into the story, I am not Japanese, and if I butcher these words, I'm trying not to, but bear with me. I was raised in Japan despite my father being American. He was in the United States Navy and stationed in Yatsuka. My mother was born and raised in Yakusuka. I was close friends with a young boy named Kato. And we were always found hanging out together. One night we had a disturbing encounter while on the way back to my house. It was a dark alleyway and supposed to be a shortcut. But what we found that night would forever haunt my dreams. The moon was shining brightly as we walked through the alleyway. There was no noise here, no traffic, and no one else but us. It was a silent walk, which we quite enjoyed, but that should have been the first warning sign of danger. We were both shy of 15 years old and interested in girls like guys our age should be. We broke the silence by telling jokes and laughing. We were both raised in Japan and we heard the story of Kusisaki Ona. But it was just a fairy tale, right? That is what we believed before that night. A breeze carried a new scent, a beautiful and sweet fragrance. The scent of perfume, as we saw a woman enter the alley ahead of us. She was beautiful, with long black hair and a dark, long coat. My heart dropped as she came closer. The black coat was not surprising as it was of a cool night, like many nights with a full moon seemed to be. She had a mask on her face. It was pretty and decorated with pink puckered lips as a design. She walked up to us and I froze in place, struck by her beauty. She looked toward Cato and asked him if he thought she was beautiful. He giggled a little and said, of course, thinking some woman was just playing pranks on me and him. But she was not. That's when she dropped her mask. Scars showed brightly on her pale face, exposing a wide and demented smile with the whitest teeth I have ever seen. She questioned him again, but then she turned to me for an answer. And of course, still starstruck, I said yes. We should have lied. No, 
we should have ran as soon as we saw her. Sharp scissors appeared in her hands as Cato grabbed me and we ran as fast as we could going away. We turned a corner and she was there smiling. We ducked and ran away, but she was everywhere we seemed to be. Here in the shadows, behind dumpsters, leaning against buildings, looking out from the shadow. Everywhere we looked, this creature was there too. As we turned another corner, she reached and grabbed Cato. Those scissors sliced his throat before he could say a word. She dropped his bleeding and convulsion body as he took his last breath, laying at her feet. She looked to me and asked me if I'm still beautiful. I stopped, my bloody friend breaking me out of the trance. And I told her she was average. Now remembering the story I had grown up listening to. She grabbed me so fast and with a speed I never saw her move. Her grip was so strong I could not break it at all. I quickly came to peace and the terms that I was going to die like my friend on the ground beside me. But death did not come for me that night. When I opened my eyes, it was not the scarred woman I saw. Oh, she was still beautiful with no flaw or blemish on her except for that smile. But I also noticed something else. Three tails dropped out of the long coat. I looked up and noticed her face looked less human and more animal. I realized this was a kitsune, not a kusisaki ona. She spoke to me, let my arm go free. She told me a story of how the boy's father hunted and killed her mate. He was drunk and did not listen as a fox pleaded to spare his life for a favor. The man had long died, but his son paid for his crime. As she finally found justice for her lost love, she stepped back and told me I could go. She would even grant me a favor, although just one. So be wise when I ask something from her. She told me all I have to do is say the word, Kitsune, and I would have my favor or wish come true. With that, she winked at me, dropped to all fours and became 
a beautiful dark fox as she ran into the darkness three tails slashing in the wind no one believed my story and the body was never found we moved shortly after that because of the harassment Cato's family was given me and mine although I was never found guilty I still yet to use that cursed wish I don't know if I ever will it's hard to believe and trust a creature like that that killed my friend and destroyed my life in that town. I never believed in the fairy tales before, but I certainly do now. Welcome to the Shadowlands. If you enjoy this story, I ask a small favor of you. Leave a like. Subscribe. Feel free to comment. And share to your friends or family. I'm glad you listened to my story and I hope you really did like it. Don't forget to click the bell overhead in case you haven't already and be sure to come back next week as we explore more cryptids legends and creatures of the night then